We'll talk now about percent increases. First thing I'll say is that the test loves to ask about percent increases and percent decreases. So these are some examples of things that the test might ask. Remember what we said about multipliers in the video working with percents. There we said that the decimal form of a percent was its multiplier. Here we'll change that a little bit. The decimal form of p percent is the multiplier for finding p percent of something. And so if I want to find 40 percent of something, I would use the multiplier 0.4. Change, just change the percent to a decimal. So 0.3 is the multiplier to find 30% of something, but we will use different multipliers for a 30% increase or a 30% decrease. We'll talk about multipliers for an increase in this video, multipliers for a decrease in the next video. Percent increases. This might be phrased as y increased by 30% or x is greater than 30% of, of y, is 30% greater than y. So either one of those is a statement of a percent increase. And either way, y was increased. Let's think about this. If we knew, say, 30% of y, how would we increase y by 30%? Think about what it means to say that y has increased by 30%. It means that we still have all of y, 100% of the original, plus 30% more. So a 30% increase of y equals all of y plus 30% more of y. That's what a 30% increase means. Well, look at all of y, that's just y. 30% of y, we use the multiplier that we learned about already, just change the percent to a decimal and multiply it, 0.3. And notice that we can factor out a y from that. We have 1 times y plus 0.3 times y, so we can factor out 1 plus 0.3 times y, or just add those together, 1.3 times y. If we were simply dealing with numbers, we could do the calculation directly. So for example, if we wanted, we could just, if we wanted to increase something by 60%, we could figure out, first of all, 60% of something and just add that to the original. So suppose we had to increase 60% by 800. This is probably a little bit easier than what you'd actually see on the test. But if we had to increase 60% by 800, First of all, we'd find 60% of 800. So, of course, 10% of 800 is just 80. So we'll multiply that by 6. 60% of 800 is 480. So that's 60% of 800. And now that gets added to the original. So we add that to the original. 800 plus 400 is 1280. And so when we increase 800 by 60%, we get 1280. We get all the original 800 plus an additional 60% of that original. Note that with numbers, it's, a relatively straight, it's relatively straightforward to do that forward calculation. Start with the starting value and then get the percent increase. That's a relatively straightforward calculation. Going backwards, though, is much trickier. In other words, if we're given the result of the percent increase and we want the starting value, that's a little bit harder. For example, if the problem told us that a price was increased by 60% and the result was 1,280, what was the starting value? That would be a hard question. We actually know that it's 800 because we just did the forward calculation, but the point is if we didn't know that, that would be a harder thing to figure out just by playing with the numbers. And this is where multipliers would help us a lot. Furthermore, with numbers, we can do direct calculations sometimes, but with variables, we need to use multipliers. If, I'm, if I want something that's 60% greater than K, well, I can't figure out 60% of K as a number because it's a variable. So what I, I just have to think of it this way. 60% greater than K, that's all of K plus 60% of K. So that's going to be K plus 0.6K. Again, factor out the K. We're going to get 1 plus 0.6, which is 1.6. And that is the multiplier for a 60% increase. So 0.6 is the multiplier for 60% of something. 
and 1.6 is the multiplier for a 60% increase. Notice we could build that multiplier directly. In general, if the problem asks about a P percent increase, all we have to do is take P per, take the percent, change it to a decimal, and add one. And that's what we follow. So for example, if we wanted a 46% increase, well, the multiplier for that would be one plus 0.46, which is 1.46. The multiplier form for a percent increase is quite useful. We need it either when the quantities are variables or when we have the numerical value of the increase of the, the final result and we want the starting value. And again, the recipe for building this is very simple. Change the percent to a decimal, add one. That's all you have to do to build the, the multiplier for a percent increase. So here's a practice problem. Pause the video and then we'll talk about this. Okay, after a 30% increase, the price of something is $78. What was the original price? All right, a tricky question. So for a to find the multiplier, what we're going to do to 30%, we're going to change it to a decimal, 0.3, and then we're going to add 1. So 1.3 is the multiplier for a 30% increase. And then the unknown original is multiplied by this. So we're just going to create a variable for that unknown original. I'll just call it x. So x times 1.3 is 78. So x equals 78 divided by 1.3. We can multiply numerator and denominator by 10, 78 divided by 13, and we could use a calculator to figure that out. That turns out to be 60. So that is the answer. That was the original price. If we increase 60 by 30%, we get 78. Here's another practice problem. Pause the video, and then we'll talk about this. Okay, at the beginning of last year, item X was at some fixed original price. At the end of last year, its price was increased by 45%, increased 45 and since that increase, its price has been T, and we want to express the original in terms of T. So we're definitely going to have to introduce a variable for that starting price, the price that we want in the answer. So let's just call that P, the starting price. Now what's the multiplier? The multiplier, we want to take 45% as a des change that to a decimal, 0.45, and then add 1, 1 1.45. That's the multiplier for a percentage increase. So we multiply that by the original price, and we get T, the final price, because the original price increases 45%. Now we want to just solve this for P, so we divide by 0.45, and that actually right there is as far as we can go. That expresses the original price in terms of t. In summary, if n increases by some percent, that's all of n plus the additional percentage of n. And so if something increases by 35%, that is all of it plus 35% more of it. The multiplier for a p percent increase all we have to do is change p to a decimal and add 1. And using multipliers to find percent change, especially when you have the result and need a starting value, or when everything is in variables, those are the two times that multipliers are particularly helpful in thinking about percent increases.